Welcome back to the Better Birth Podcast. Today, I'm super excited because we have members of the executive Angel Health team with us. <laughs> um, so would you guys like to introduce yourselves? Sure. Sure. My name is Maria, and I oversee our client's experience. And that is from them signing up to onboarding sessions, to day of delivery, and beyond. My main goal is just to make sure that our parents have a smooth and stress-free collection process. And yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, my name is Manuela. I lead operations here at Angel Health. And so that means I focus my attention on things like shipping, billing, product development. Yeah, I'm Johnny. Uh, I run growth here at Anja. Uh, and it's my job to help uh, grow uh, the education, expansion of our programs, and help with some of the strategy side of things to make sure that we're sticking to our mission of making cord blood banking accessible and available for as many people as possible. Amazing. Um, cool. So what do you guys like most about working at Anja House? Um, I would say for me, the most gratifying part about being a part of the team is um, interacting with our customers. And I would say having a direct impact on their lives. So guiding them through the process, addressing their concerns, and knowing that I am a pillar of support during such a pivotal moment in their lives is, is pretty rewarding. Awesome. I would say the culture, I think one thing that's really important and your health here for you is trust. And so I feel like with that, I've never had to hold back on my opinions. And that gives me the creative freedom to come up with solutions for Anja. <laughs> I love that. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's uh, so many great things. I think uh, when I look back, when I joined, I didn't know what cord blood banking was. Um, you yeah, know, I was definitely um, oblivious to it, much like the 97% of people in the U.S. who uh, do not choose mm -hmm. to bank their cord blood just because it's it's not a very common thing to know. Um, so I've really loved being exposed to this kind of niche thing that I hope one day becomes compulsory in the birth process. Mm -hmm. um, and beyond that, of course, the culture of the team. I think we've got a, a fun camaraderie going on. It's a small <laughs> team. You know, we're doing a lot of new things that are um, not common for this uh, pretty, like, old but still young industry. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think there's, there's a lot of things that, uh, to enjoy about the, the time here at Anjo. <laughs> yeah. So for anyone listening that is an Angel parent or is thinking about becoming an Angel parent, um, Maria and Manuela are really awesome because they basically touch everything that touches the customer. Um, so yeah, everything end to end from deciding to get the kit up until even like up to like years after birth is everything that Manuela and Maria oversee. So I think that's really, really special. So I'm super grateful to have you guys on the team because um, you guys do such a good job with making sure that every Angel parent's experience is so stellar. Um, so I'd be curious to know what is something that surprised you about working in this industry or the product itself? I would say what surprised me is the sheer potential of stem cells and the power of it. The possibilities are boundless from treating um, things such as hair loss to something more dire like HIV. It's thrilling to be a part of something with such a far-reaching impact. I would say um, the preparations that parents have to go through before birth and even during and after birth. I think if you're not a parent, you think, okay, I need a hospital room and a partner for emotional support. But it really goes beyond that because what happens if I need an emergency C-section? What happens if my water broke and my husband's at work? Who's going to drive me to the hospital? Um, you know, like what if I run out of... What if I can't breastfeed? Like things like these that people don't talk about. So that gives me more appreciation for my mom. <laughs> so I would say, yeah, the preparation that families have to um, really consider when giving birth. Cool. Yeah. Do you guys know your own birth story? I don't know. I don't. Do you know what time you were born? In the morning. Okay. Do you know the exact time? No. I've tried <laughs> to look it up so I can see like what Your my astrology. Si yes. I, I don't know though. From what I remember, 7 a.m. on a Saturday. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Do you know more about like like were you born via C section or Yeah. So anything my like that? mom was really scared of the pain that mm -hmm. you get from a natural vaginal birth. And in Indonesia where I was from, you can actually request a C section mm. privately. So my mom was just like snip me up <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, she got a C section. Same thing with my brother. And that was kind of the end. She had a pretty smooth birth. So cool. 
Okay, interesting. Because you guys spend so much time interfacing with our pregnant parents, if you could tell pregnant parents one thing, what would it be? I would say to all the parents out there, remember that your instincts matter and you should advocate for yourself. No is a complete sentence and never underestimate the power of taking charge in your child's life and their future. Um, So that means, of course, consider banking your child's stem cells. (laughs) I feel like it's an investment that echoes care and foresight. And it should be done. I would say don't second doubt your symptoms. Like, you know your body best. So if you feel like a diagnosis doesn't reflect your condition and how you feel, don't be afraid to speak up and ask for that second checkup. Mm, cool. What's been the craziest thing that you've learned about pregnancy and birth since working at Into Health? I would say a couple of things that stood out. Um, the fact that if a baby's nails are long enough, it has the ability to scratch your uterus. Um, That's crazy. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Another one is you can also, uh, if the weight of the baby is pretty significant, it can uh, break your tailbone Mm. or break your ribs. And that was pretty shocking. Ouch. (laughs) What was the other one? Um, There's something called the Chadwick sign. It's when your vagina turns blue because of increased venous blood flow. Mm. Yeah, it's blue or purple. Blue or purple or red. Um, so just because it's like, you're pregnant? Yeah, it's just like increase the blood flow. Mm. So it's a light show for your vagina. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Bank your kids, uh, you know, stem cells. Uh, I think it's it's one of those things where it is a once in a lifetime opportunity, and there's so much benefit for it. You know, when you look back a decade uh, ago, you know, cord blood, uh, I think, had, what, like three treatments approved by the FDA? There was really few. Uh, A lot of clinical trials happening, but it was still very nascent. Not many people were doing it, um, and not many people were, like, seeing the immediate benefits. But you look now, there's over 85 approved FDA treatments. Like, Mm -hmm. there's so much opportunity for people, and that's just with cord blood. And when you look at the placenta and the things that have happened with the ability to segment all those individual cells, uh, you know, there's no current FDA approved treatments, but there's dozens of clinical trials happening for bone regeneration, wound healing, eye care, uh, you know, um, a lot of age type stuff, which is uh, pretty interesting and fun. Even so, like, you know, if you, if you live a blessed, charm life and you don't have any problems, which is great. Later on in life, you can still use it for um, like anti-aging type stuff. And, um, you know, by then it's who knows where the science will be. So that's a really exciting aspect. And you might as well take advantage of it now because... There is always bone marrow stem cells, but it's an extremely painful process, uh, a lot of complications, infections, potential issues with it. So this is like a once, yeah, once in a lifetime opportunity. Right. Yeah. So one other question I had about working within the company is what is the most complicated part about working at Angel Health? Um, I would say anything that requires rushed actions. Mm. So for us, for example, is when a mom... Um, finds out about cord blood banking later in her birth journey and then decides to bank later in their birth journey. And so we had a mom who was due within 24 hours. And so we had to just pull all stops to make sure that we get a kit to her on time. She knows what to do. Her doctors know what to do. Um, We made it happen, but that was quite complex. (laughs) Yeah, I would echo that. So it's about balancing the personal touch with efficiency. Um, It's been a fascinating challenge because we're all about making heartfelt connections and also ensuring we provide like a swift and reliable service at the same time. Mm. So striking that balance is where the magic happens. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I think probably the what I was just alluding to with that 97% of people who don't uh, generally mm. bank their cord blood, I think there's a lot of education that comes with the territory here. Um, we definitely have to help people understand a, the benefit of cord blood banking, which is huge, um, and not just cord blood, but cord tissue and placenta, just everything that goes along with all that and the options that could have. Um, and also just making sure that the way we're carrying it out uh, in terms of making it accessible, you know, we're one of the most affordable options for cord blood banking, but that doesn't come uh, easily. Um, mm-hmm. So I think making sure that we're uh, educating people on it, but also making it accessible for people. Mm. Um, has maintained uh, as one of the more complicated uh, equations to solve here. If you could name fun facts about yourself, <laughs> what would they be? 
how interesting do you want it to be? <laughs> it, it should be very uh, how professional. Very, well, I don't know. It can be anything. <laughs> Okay. Or maybe you can do it for each other even because fun oh, fact, me and Manuel facts. are each other's work wives, I think. Right. <laughs> hey, work wives. She's abusive. No. Um. <laughs> I dislocated my nanny's knee before. Do you know that about me? Oh. No. When I was in the third grade. Maybe you are by, <laughs> <laughs> by accident. Manuel punches <laughs> people when she thinks things are funny, but sometimes they're painful. Um, no, I did by accident. She was sitting with her legs like up, up like that. That's your love language, right? Physical... A physical, <laughs> physical touch? No, a like, physical touch. Yeah. <laughs> of course. I hug you lots. <laughs> or maybe you could give a fun fact about each other. Like, Manuel, what do you think is Maria's fun fact? Is actually really good with beauty. Mm-hmm. Like, she does a lot of DIYs. So, like, yes. hair she's really good with. Nails. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Eyebrows. Yeah, she's a really good DIYer, which I think actually okay, helps with her job. Because, again, like with Anja, it is a time-sensitive process. So I think she's quick on her feet. And that almost comes from her ability to just <laughs> swing things. Yeah. No, I love that you're a beauty queen. Literally, on the, on the way here, Johnny and I were talking about how I feel like the way that you approach beauty and even the fact that you're kind of late sometimes, I feel like makes <laughs> me feel late. better because I'm usually the latest person. <laughs> Honestly. And I spend a lot of time, like, doing things, so I appreciate that you view your life as an art. Her life is an art. Look at yeah. her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So here, I'll do it for you. What's okay, a fun yeah. fact about Manuela? Um, a fun fact about Manuela is, well, I think your childhood in Indonesia is really interesting, and also I think it's really admirable that you immigrated to Canada. <laughs> um, like, my mom always says, never underestimates the power of an immigrant, because she's an immigrant. And Manuela recently got her Canadian citizenship. Ooh. Yeah, so I feel like to go through the naturalization process is really cool. Um, and let's see. I feel like you like to do a lot of outdoorsy things. You do a lot of spin. That was one of the first things I perceived about you was that on your Instagram, there's a lot of like fitness content, which I think is really interesting. So yeah, I feel like it's cool that you like to live a healthy lifestyle. And I think a fun fact about the team in general is that we don't have any allergies. Like, we, whenever true. we go out to eat oh, together, yeah. it's always, like... Always an amazing time. Yeah, we always have the same, like, different types of uh, food interests. Okay, so for you, I would say you always manage to find more time in the day. I don't know how you do it, because <laughs> I can get overwhelmed with almost, like, the smallest change that happens in my day, but you will find time to work out. You will find time to... <laughs> Um, make content you'll find time to have meetings you'll find time to read you'll find time to you have a really great work-life balance and I don't know how (laughs) so that's something I really really admire about you um but you still get shit done which is awesome Mm, so thank you yeah a fun fact about you have lots of fun facts (laughs) like what (laughs) like that you're on the wheel of fortune I feel like you do a lot of things sometimes I I think about your life and I'm like I feel like you do things just so you have fun facts (laughs) to say about yourself i wouldn't say i do things because i have fun facts i think it's because i like to do fun things okay that's true so then it becomes a fun fact yeah i guess so uh yeah wheel of fortune was a lot of fun pat is you won wheel of fortune i did and you got a free trip to hawaii and florida did you go i went yeah yeah i went to with who uh friends yeah (laughs) (laughs) but uh no yeah i got a free trip to florida Free trip to Hawaii, but my dad won't let me live it down that I didn't win the car at the end. So, so cool. Okay, well, since you guys are here and you guys are the experts in all things Anja Health, I wanted to go through some of our frequently asked questions from our mm-hmm. customers. Um, and especially Maria is able to answer questions so swiftly. Um, and that was a nod to Taylor <laughs> Swift, my <laughs> queen. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I was thinking we could just go through them one by one and just answer them as though you're speaking to a customer, potential customer. Um, cause especially on TikTok, I get asked these questions a lot. So the first question is why do you think people should bank cord blood, cord tissue, and then the placenta? Um, so I would say, uh, one of the ways that Anja differentiates with banking is we have the ability to bank the placenta as well as the core blood and the core tissue. So I'm a huge advocate of banking all three. And the reason for that is because you have the possibility and the potential of having and taking care of multiple treatments. So, um, 
your provider will be able to tell you how much volume is needed for a treatment. It may be all, or you may have the opportunity to have several treatments in like smaller doses. But um, with the placenta, it's uh, incredibly powerful because it can help with anti-aging and more. And then core tissue can assist with Alzheimer's, autism, and hair loss. And then Core blood can treat like cancers, blood disorders, and immune disorders, just to name a few. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I always tell parents that there's a greater volume and variety of stem cells when you do all three. So that's why that's our most popular. And Maria does an amazing job of <laughs> expressing that to parents. Um, so if if I don't bank my baby's stem cells, then can my baby someday find a stem cell match in the future? What are the options there if you don't move forward with Angel Health and you're currently pregnant? So I would say it can be difficult to find a match, um, especially if you're a person of color or someone who's mixed race. And um, on top of that, there's a 29% chance that a match will be accepted in the recipient system. So the fact that you have the option to be able to bank your child's stem cells. Not only can your child benefit from it, the family can benefit from it as well. The siblings can benefit, the parents can benefit. Um, so you're able to ensure uh, a future treatment for your family by banking these stem cells. And again, everybody be, everybody can benefit from it. Cool. Okay, awesome. So one of the most common questions I would say, especially that I get on social media is just how does it all work? Like if you're currently pregnant and you're interested in banking stem cells, mm -hmm. how does collection and storage work with Angel Health? So you would go on the Angel Health website. You would go on angelhealth.shop, get a kit of your choosing. You can get cord blood, cord blood and cord tissue, or cord blood, cord tissue, and placenta. And we send you a kit within five business days of your checkout order. Um, you get it. We send you lots of pamphlets that you can share with your family members, your doctors, so that everyone's informed. Um, we as a company also communicate with your doctors. Um, we fax them information so that they're aware on the day of birth. And then what you would do after birth, within six hours is what we recommend, but you can always do so right after. Um, you call our pickup line or you go on your portal and you place a pickup. Um, a medical courier from Angel Health will come over. We'll ship that to our laboratory in New Jersey and we'll process them for you. Um, you will get your stem cell report within one month, and then you're on your way to a healthier life. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, one question I have for you, Manuela, is what is your favorite part about working with our lab? Like, I think something that I really admire about you is with our supply chain partners and everything like that, you're able to maintain a really solid relationship, I think, because you are an empath. Thank you. <laughs> and you just have a really kind heart. So oh, thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah, I think you do a good job at always maintaining relationships and just making people feel good about working with you. So oh, yeah, what's, what's your favorite part about our lab? About our lab? Um, I think everyone's just staying to the mission, and so it makes it just easier because when you're staying to the mission, everyone puts that extra care, extra effort, so everything's smooth. And beyond that, it's just understanding that businesses are built around people. And so mm -hmm. if people are happy, the work gets done, another day, another job done. <laughs> <laughs> and that's really it. So just making sure that everyone's comfortable around you. Okay, I love that. What do you think makes Angel Health different from other companies? The care we put both pre-purchase and post-purchase, I think a lot of companies fall off in terms of service after your purchase because you think, okay, checklist done. But then especially for us, we assign each parent with their own agent. And so they don't have to repeat their stories. We know their journey, um, their concerns. Um, the care we put both pre-purchase and post-purchase, I think a lot of companies fall off in terms of service after your purchase because you think, okay, checklist done. But then especially for us, we assign each parent with their own agent. And so they don't have to repeat their stories. We know their journey, um, their concerns. Um, and just like that whole hand holding, I think, um, speaks a lot. Especially again, like previously I mentioned, um, parents do have to prepare a lot. So with the cord blood banking portion, we just make sure that you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. I think you guys set the tone a lot of the time for that handholding experience because you guys both have such big hearts. Um, what do you think gives you guys so much patience when it comes to customer service and just being able to empathize with the customer? Um, I think for me, it's 
at Angela, like we're talking about real empowerment here, like armoring our, our parents with a choice that can potentially impact their child's health and future. And knowing that we work together to figure out what plans are working, how we can um, be successful as a company, but then also make it affordable and stick to our mission with making it affordable and accessible for parents. Um, yeah, I lost my train of thought again. <laughs> That's okay. So having spent like over a decade in customer service, I've had the privilege of overseeing uh, quality assurance departments to leading customer experience teams. And I would say my drive stems from the profound fact that positive customer experiences can make an impact in people's lives. And it's why I can only work for a company I believe in, like Anja. And that's it. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Because I feel like when, even when uh, I first was chatting with you about joining the team, like we talked about Chewy, I feel like they have a really, really good customer. <laughs> I feel like I feel like Chewy has a really good customer service um, experience, and yeah, I think you embody everything that I envisioned for RCX. Like I think Manuel and I both, we can do customer experience, but we don't love it. And I feel like I'm so thankful to have someone on the team that like loves it and is good at it. Like we both, I feel like would come, come up against like some more impatient folks that was, was harder for us to deal with, but I feel like you always deal with it with such grace. So yeah, I really admire that. Thank you. It's really <laughs> also just in her nature. I yeah. Guess. So it doesn't, it comes very naturally to you. Um, and so <laughs> our customers can feel that. But yeah. It's like not something you can fake. Yeah, I agree. Um, Manuel, do you want to touch on your work history as well and what kind yeah. of gives you the will to be patient? The will to be patient. Um, well, I actually started my career in a laboratory. <laughs> <laughs> I have a biochemistry degree, and so I spent a lot of my summers um, in laboratories and hospital. Um, and I think just being around that environment, you're exposed to pretty much every player in healthcare. So doctors, um, scientists, the patients, the parents, the caretakers. And so just seeing that, I think for years and years on end, um, shows me just how hard it is to um, go through with treatments. And I think, you know, when you understand that and their faces behind a health condition or like you see why health services are made, um, you just take that empathy and, um, it just becomes a part of you and it translate over to my work. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Um, when you guys someday have kids, if you have kids, how would you go about your birth plan? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I know I want to have kids, um, two or three that I know. I want to do cord blood banking, obviously with Angel Health. <laughs> Slay. <laughs> Slay. Um, and yeah, I actually learn a lot from like our Angel parents. And so definitely making sure like leading up to the day of birth that my birth bag is packed. I have, you know, like extra formula ready just in case no milk comes out. Um, I have like family on dial to make sure that they can just rush if we have to. And uh, make sure that my health team is dialed in. And then after making sure that, um, you know, like Uber Eats, it's ready if I need it. Um, and um, yeah, I would just say be as prepared as possible. Even when, even for things that you don't necessarily, necessarily think will impact you. You thought about your potential birth plan or if you, you were even to recommend it to like your sister. Or yeah, I would like say, that. um, Definitely, I would need the support of a midwife and a doula. I feel like um, I can advocate for myself, but if I'm going to be focused on the health and wellness of my baby, just going to be like, talk to the nurse. I can't do it. So yeah. I want somebody like in my corner along with my partner, um, you know, like just advocating for me. Like, this is what she requested. This was part of her plan. And I think something like Manuela said, like, talking to so many different parents and hearing how they prepare themselves. Like one parent said that she had an actual board and she was like, you are not going to forget my birth plan. Mm. So she had the board 
like made and she held it behind her and um also like she did the research on the route to the hospital ahead of time and just like um the background and meeting all the nursing staff ahead of time so it's like I want to be as thorough as possible but I know I don't want to get lost in it so I would definitely need the support of like a midwife a doula somebody else there to be with me yeah Actually, now that I've had tran- like a chance like think it through, I would say to just like document things. Um, mm-hmm. You never know when things are going to pop up, like even things like, okay, like I felt this like one kick today. It feels a little weird. I want to make sure that it's documented so that I have it ready on my next checkup, just in case it actually is a symptom of something else mm-hmm. that I'm not aware of because I'm just a mom, a future mom, whereas like a doctor has probably seen something like that a lot more and realized, hey, it might be a pattern for something else. We should get you tested. Right. Yeah. I will say too, um, when speaking with all the parents, what we did was we creatively put together a checklist so we can make sure like our parents are set up for success. And again, that's learning through what worked for parents, what didn't work for them, and then just like condensing it into a checklist. And that's something that um, whenever you sign up with us, that's a benefit. So we'll make sure like that's one of the tools that you get to make sure that you're successful. And it's a pretty extensive and thorough checklist that I know would be beneficial to a lot of parents. Cool. Also, the other thing I think is just like making sure that you get a doctor that you are comfortable with. I think that plays a big part in your pregnancy just because um, you don't want a doctor to, I don't want to say medical gaslighting, right? That's definitely a thing, but you don't want them to underestimate what you feel. Um, So yeah, just making sure you have a doctor that you can vibe with. Right. Okay. Awesome. What's your favorite pregnancy or birth product that you've come across besides an Angel Health kit? I would say something that I'm obsessed with, um, not pregnant currently, but I have a pregnancy pillow, maternity pillow. Mm. I sleep with it every single night, and I I will probably continue to sleep with it after having a child. But like, it's that's something that I cannot live without is the maternity pillow. Mm, you sleep on your side and then you hug it? Yeah, like, so you, like, cradle it and it's, like, <laughs> tight on your back. It's in the front. It's, like, the perfect amount of, like, pillow on, this, on like, where your head lays. It's just, it's awesome. And it's, like, 60 bucks that you can get it. And it makes such an impact, even for me. And I'm not pregnant, but, like, it makes such an impact, so. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, I would say a cool birth product is this thing called a breast milk collector it's like a little piece of silicone or plastic that latches onto your nipples or areola Mm -hmm. and it catches your leakage your milk leakage because for some women it's really hard to produce milk and so that ensures that every little golden liquid is safe for your baby cool and where are you from i am from jakarta indonesia originally but you live now in in vancouver canada (laughs) (laughs) love that (laughs) Okay, so where I'm from, I actually grew up uh, in a town like 30 minutes, 45 minutes north of the border of Mexico. Um, We had one stoplight Mm -hmm. and a Dairy Queen. And then (laughs) um, I moved to Houston. So I've been in Houston off and on for 15 years. Wow. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so I was born and raised in Los Angeles. Uh, I was born in Glendale, if anyone knows it, and ended up uh, living in like the Westlake Thousand Oaks area for any this of the LA the land. locals. This is Glendale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah, um, born and raised here. Went to school in Boston. So, uh, you know, spent about eight years in Boston and then the past few years traveling around. But mm-hmm. glad to be settled back here in LA with you at Anja. Um, and yeah. Did you like going to college in Boston? I did. It's a great college town. Uh, I'd leave it at that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a great place to visit. Uh, I think I had enough of the winters. Uh, yes. You know, especially bouncing around from various cold cities. Uh-huh. Uh, there's a reason LA is a great place to live. Um, it does get a little hot. So, uh, but beyond that, it's better than shoveling snow. Right. I think it's funny because I feel like Manuel and Marie are each other's work wives, and I feel like you're my work wife. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and we went, we both went from Boston to LA because mm-hmm. we're LA girly pops. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, definitely uh, different circles we run in, but you've exposed me to other parts of LA that I, I had less appreciation for growing up. Which so. parts of LA? Uh, I'd probably just say, like, you know, the. <laughs> puffy coat west hollywood uh type vibe but it's a it's a fun thing the air wants smoothie you know uh-huh. the, uh there you know there's always something to appreciate and there's some little something for everyone in la so yes that's exactly a, a fun aspect 
Um, why did you accept the offer to work? Oh, yeah. And what is what is your background? In terms of work background? Yeah. Yeah. So um, in college, I actually started my first company. Uh, it was an energy bar company. So when I was running late for my morning classes, I had no time for breakfast and coffee. So I thought, <laughs> why not eat it? And uh, so my friend and I, we... Uh, started making some bars in our dorm room. You know, we'd go to the library at like one or two in the morning and sell bars to like students who are pulling all nighters. Mm -hmm. um, There's a cup of coffee in every bar, so that was a uh, um, the selling point. And people liked them a lot, so we kept on selling them. Eventually, we expanded throughout Boston and then Boston to New England, New England across the country, and uh, we ended up selling the business uh, two years ago after um, about eight years of running the brand. So it was a pretty fun time. I learned a lot uh, from when we started when I was 19. Until when we sold it when I was, you know, 27 or so. Mm. Um, and, yeah, and then after that, I've just been kind of helping other brands with growth and M&A type work. Um, and then doing some uh, work in real estate, which has been fun. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely a very different background than cordless <laughs> banking. And, uh, but uh, I think what I've learned in all of those experiences um, is connecting with customers, uh, helping understand kind of where they're coming from in their stories, actually with um, – the uh, my business with Eat Your Coffee, uh, one of our most devout customers, she would have like three bars a day. It wow. was it was a a nun in uh, this place in New York, and we thought she was buying them for like the the whole like you know mm -hmm. church or whatever. And we found out later because she reached out because uh, well we reached out to her because she like paused her her plan, and we were like oh no like you know I'm not gonna say her name but. Um, you know, I uh, hope, hope you're doing all right. Just wanted to check in. You know, she was like an 89-year-old woman. And wow. she, apparently she was going through chemo. And these bars gave her like a lot of energy mm. to keep going through her day. So it was like a really like rewarding thing. Um, and we had a lot of those experiences of people that were like using them for energy and mm. uh, like later on in life, which was a surprising use case because they are also low acid when you're mm -hmm. like, eating it. So um, there's a little touch of the healthcare. <laughs> <laughs> With your nun. Yeah, like that. So she was just eating them all herself. It wasn't for her yeah, yeah. fellow nuns. No, no. She would just have three a day. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty That's crazy. Cool. Because it yeah, didn't give her any sort of acid issues. But eventually her doctor said, you need to cool it on the caffeine. So, <laughs> so she was no longer able to, to consume the bars. But um, yeah. I see. Oh, I guess like some people oh, yeah. usually ask why we collect maternal withdrawals. Yeah. And so the reason why we collect maternal withdrawals is because we want to make sure your cord blood is good for use later on. So that just what we do is we test the maternal blood mm -hmm. um, to make sure that there are no diseases that would stop you from using your cord blood in the future. So it acts as quality assurance. Right. And okay, cool. how do parents know we're not going to clone their, their kids? We are definitely not going to clone. Um, <laughs> is it illegal? It is illegal. I, I would hope so. <laughs> um, we're definitely not going to clone. It's actually part of um, the Angia parents' terms and condition. Mm -hmm. And so um, we take the maternal draw strictly for testing, quality assurance. Whatever is left over, we actually discard it in a safe manner according to um, our laboratory protocol. Cool. Do you have any reminders for parents uh, if they already have their Angel Health Kit? If they already have their Angel Health Kit, I would say um, to just prepare everyone in your vicinity for this experience. Um, so your friends and family for support, but then really also your birth team to make sure that they know what you want to bank. Because on the day of birth, it's very stressful. There are a lot of checklists to check. And so if you want to bank your cord blood, make sure you verbally remind your doctor, look them in the eye and tell them that you want to bank your cord blood. If you want to bank all three, again, look them in the eye and mm -hmm. remind them that you want to bank your cord blood, cord tissue, and placenta. We also have an Anja stand-up pamphlet where you check what you want to bank, stand that beside your bed or physically give it to your doctor as they enter your room for a check-in so that they're aware of what you want to bank. And it should be smooth sailing from there. Cool. I would say also take your entire kit with you um, and then keep it at room temperature. So no freezing, don't uh, refrigerate it. Um, it's optimal at room temperature. And then to add to, so one of the questions that I usually get from parents is, can I do delayed cord cord clamping. Um, so to ensure like optimal volume, we recommend 
at least two minutes, a uh, two minute delay or less um, in order to be able to store uh, the core blood. So. Cool. Really Don't awesome. forget if you have it in your car, make sure that it's not under direct sunlight because we don't want the coag anticoagulants in the cord blood bag to condensate. So mm -hmm. remember that. That's important. Cool. Okay, I feel like that's good. Okay. All right. Hit me. <laughs> okay. Uh, should we talk? Uh, yeah, we'll go through it. Okay. So, Catherine, why bank cord blood? You would want to bank cord blood because cord blood is really rich with hematopoietic stem cells. So these stem cells are really inclined to blood regeneration. So cord blood, the stem cells are inclined to blood regeneration, whereas the tissue stem cells from the cord tissue are really inclined to tissue regeneration. So the hematopoietic stem cells that are inclined to blood regeneration are really good to repair different types of blood-related diseases and disorders. Um, and cord blood has also been involved in quite a bit of research over the past 30 years. So things like the fifth person ever this year was cured of HIV, different types of cancers. There are literally over a thousand clinical trials happening covering all different types of cancers, musculoskeletal disorders, um, and the like. So Cord blood is um, definitely something that you want to bank if you're going to bank any of them. Um, I personally know the most about cord blood, or or rather, the cord blood was the first that I was really exposed to when it comes to sources of stem cells because it's used frequently for cerebral palsy treatment, and my brother had cerebral palsy and he did cord blood stem cells, so that's why I would bank cord blood. Makes sense. And if someone has a tough time telling a doctor, I need my hematopoietic stem cells. Was there another way to another reason, another way you want to call it? <laughs> um, HSCs, maybe. Yeah, HSCs. <laughs> An easier thing to remember, probably. Your hemis. Your hemis, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because hema is is blood, so you know HSCs mm, is a nice way to the Latin root. Latin root. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So you kind of touched on this, but why bank cord tissue? Right. So cord tissue stem cells are really important to be banked. Or wait, I, I try to start every sentence with if you're pregnant, because then it can chop mm -hmm. into a short properly. Cool. So if you're pregnant, I would definitely recommend not only banking your cord blood, but also banking your cord tissue, mm -hmm. because the cord tissue stem cells are mesenchymal stem cells, which are really inclined to tissue regeneration. So cord blood stem cells are inclined to blood regeneration, and cord tissue is inclined to tissue regeneration. So you would obviously want both in the case that there are any disorders or ailments that involve lacking blood cells or lacking tissue cells. Um, so cord tissue stem cells in particular have been used for, wait, I'm going to pull up the exact list, but lung disease, Alzheimer's, autism, heart disease, hair loss. There are literally so many that I constantly have to look at an extensive list because I always forget the, the true extent to which stem cells can be so potent. So, um, yeah, I, I would definitely consider banking core tissue stem cells. It's also one of the easiest to bank because it just comes from the cord itself. So a lot of people that want to do extensive delayed cord clamping or want to do placenta encapsulation, there's always kind of questions for parents on what they want to do there. But you can do both of those things to whatever extent you would like and then still bank the cord tissue. So um yeah, that's something to consider, too, if you're currently pregnant and creating your birth plan. Amazing. And we're one of the only banks that bank the placenta as well. So that's a kind of a new phenomenon, thanks to a lot of advancements in that. But why? what's the difference between the core tissue and the placenta? They're both tissue, right? They both help mm -hmm. treat tissue type things. But what is the difference? Why bank the placenta? Right. So the placenta is not only rich with mesenchymal stem cells, but also placental epithelial cells. And actually, one of our medical advisors... Um, who's affiliated with the genetics testing company Billion to One, he is super bullish on the placenta because it's so large in volume. And just in general, people think that there's potential for the placenta to even be more potent than cord blood stem cells just because it is so large. So there's even a public company, Cellularity, run by Dr. Uh, Bob Hariri, who is kind of a thought leader in the space of stem cells. Um, but that entire company is based essentially on placenta stem cell research and potential there. 
um, and being able to use placenta stem cells to treat different types of diseases like uh, spina bifida or heart disease. Um, people have also used placenta stem cells in conjunction with cord blood stem cells to treat diseases like leukemia um, and also anti-aging, wound healing, eye injuries, neural degeneration. So the possibilities are truly endless. And if you're if you are currently pregnant or giving birth soon, I would recommend banking cord blood, cord tissue, and the placenta because then you get the greatest volume and variety of stem cells. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think they're, it's really amazing what's happening with, with placenta stem cells. So mm-hmm. it's great to see kind of why, um, you know, why more people should do it and use it and everything else. Also love how you uh, pronounce Dr. Hariri's uh, name, a little like Rihanna. <laughs> Hariri. <laughs> how do you pronounce it? Hariri. Hariri. I, I think I don't it's know. Is it Hariri? Swarov always says Hariri. Maybe he's just owing, you know, giving homage to Rihanna. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Maybe I think it's uh yeah. Maybe I should post that clip on Twitter and tag him. <laughs> Which one is it? Hariri or yeah. Hariri? <laughs> That's funny. And Rihanna. We should tag Rihanna as well yeah. to get a sense of, of that. And then maybe she'll bank her court, but hopefully she does. <laughs> Bad Bob Riri. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, you already talked about usage of both hematopoietic HSCs and mesenchymal stem cells, MSCs. Your hemis or your mesies? Mesies. I'm getting messy. <laughs> um, so now let's talk about um, finding a match, right? So if I don't bank my stem cells or I didn't know about it, you know, I know that there are public banks. So what are my chances if I, um, I'm looking into a public bank trying to find a match for my, my child should they need something in the future? Yes. Yeah, so if you do, if you are currently pregnant and you at birth decide not to save your baby stem cells, then in the future, if you need a stem cell match, then the chances that you actually do find a stem cell match can be extremely low, especially if you're a person of color or mixed race. So that's why for pregnant parents who are having babies that are mixed race or people of color, I always tell them my personal story and also the following stats. So my personal story is that my younger brother and I are both half Chinese and half white, and we were looking for stem cells to use to treat his cerebral palsy from a near drowning accident. And we ultimately couldn't find a match. And that is largely because if you are multiracial, the chances that you find a cord blood stem cell match are less than 19%. And so we definitely fell in that. Um, If you're African, it's also 19%. If you're Black Caribbean, 22%. African American, 23%. um, And it goes on and on through different ethnicities. Um, The highest actually is Middle Eastern. That's 53%. Um, Native American is 57%. White European is 80%. So this is just yet another health inequity that people of color and mixed race folks have to face. So I think the real biggest solution to it is if you're currently pregnant, especially as a person of color or someone who is mixed race, I would highly recommend looking into saving your baby's stem cells because in the future, if you need a stem cell match, you may not be able to find one. So the best way to guarantee that you have a match is to have your baby's own stem cells because that will be a 100% match for the baby, a 50% match for parents, and a 75% match for siblings, and a partial potential other match for other family members as well. So these are all really crucial things to keep in mind, and that's why um, I would head to the link in our bio (laughs) (laughs) to to get one of our Angel Health kits. Um, that I created because of my younger brother who couldn't find a cord blood stem cell match because we fall under that multiracial less than 19% of people that can find a stem cell match. Yeah. So you can guarantee your own by saving your own. Definitely. Yeah, it's incredibly important. I think the just the lack of, um, I think, unfortunately, donations of um, a variety of um you know, different groups, I think it's also, you know, part of the lack of education, right? Like mm-hmm. in a lot of these you know, maybe lower income areas where are more ethnically diverse, um, a lot of doctors just don't bring up um, the option to bank, donate, whatever it might be. So it just leads to even further um, issues. So really the only way is to continue to make sure that you have your own. Right. Um, and hopefully in the future, you know, someone helps with having more public, but in the meantime, mm-hmm. you know, we can be that solution. Mm-hmm. Um so, yeah, I think when we come to talk about private banking and you know, obviously what we provide, um, how does that collection process and storage actually work? 
Yeah, so if you are giving birth soon and you want to save your baby's stem cells from your umbilical cord and placenta rather than throw out your umbilical cord and placenta, what you can do is get an AngiHealth kit at angiahealth.com. Um, and the kit is shipped straight to your door. We, you, we typically ship it at 30 weeks or later, depending on when you order, or if you order prior to the 30-week period, then we'll wait until the 30-week period. So regardless of where you are in your pregnancy, I would definitely recommend just ordering so you don't forget, and then we'll worry about sending it to you at the right time so it's not just sitting at your house. Um, then when the time comes for you to give birth, just bring the kit with you to birth, and it contains all the materials that your provider will need to collect stem cells right at birth. So it contains a cord blood bag, which is very similar to a regular blood bag. Basically, after birth, your provider can just stick the end of that bag, um, the, their, the needle on it, into the umbilical cord vein and let the blood flow, then they can cut off six to 10 inches of the umbilical cord, place it in a small jar, place your placenta in a jar that we have, and then place all of that in your kit. We also collect a sample of the birth parent's blood to screen for disease because you are essentially donating to your future baby or other relatives. So we screen for disease. So we, you can place all of that in our kit, keep it at room temperature, and then fill out our quick pickup form in our portal or call us to let us know that you've given birth. We have a 24-hour line for that. And we can then come and meet you anywhere in the United States, even Alaska and Hawaii. And we will bring your kit and your stem cells to our lab in New Jersey where it will be processed and cryopreserved in the same way that you freeze eggs and sperm. Um, and then in the future, if you need stem cells, then you can reach out to us and take them from our lab to wherever you're getting the treatment where a physician can oversee it. Great. Wow. Have we ever, you know, shipped, uh, stem cells? Does our lab have experience with that and success rates with it? Yeah, our lab does indeed have experience with utilizing stem cells. Um, I won't disclose exact numbers due to HIPAA, but we, we have done it. Um, and we've done it for our own parents as well. Um, and not just for the baby, but for siblings too. So, um, yeah, it's been really special to be a part of that. Yeah. I think one thing that we can say HIPAA wise that I'm proud of is that we have a hundred percent success rate when it comes to releases, making sure that the stem cells we're storing for our families are actually going to be, mm -hmm. um, you know, usable because I think one thing you're doing is you're trusting us. Yes. with the safe uh, collection and storage of your stem cells. So, you know, the more you can feel confident that they're going to work when you need them most, um, you know, the better off you are. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, our lab has so much experience and so much with all of that, that um, uh, it's really great to see that, you know, we can have that reliability um, right. given the offering that we offer. Uh, but cool. A lot of, a lot of steps, but thankfully <laughs> the doctors do all the work. So that's good. Yes. That is good. Other than reminding them, got to make sure you remind your yes. doctors to, to bank everything for you. So, yeah, I mean, we talked a little bit about um, this throughout all the different questions, but what makes Anja different? And maybe how do you spell Anja? How do you pronounce Anja? But what is uh, what makes us different? Yeah, so what makes Anja Health different, I think, is largely our customer experience. We have a really uh, strong customer experience um, that Maria and Manuel are able to oversee. And we also have a parent's community. We have courses in the community as well for birth. Um, so our own customers get free access to those resources. We have also some discounts to partnered brands with really popular and curated baby and pregnancy brands. Um, so that's really special. Um, and then we are also able to bank placenta stem cells, which is something that's really amazing too, because like I mentioned previously, the placenta is so large in volume that the hopes with research around the placenta are really optimistic. Um, and so being able to store stem cells from your placenta is really amazing. Um, and then lastly, we are different because we do manual processing. So we're able to get up to 25% more stem cells by having essentially our lab technicians hand uh, hand, like process your stem cells by hand rather than going through a machine. So it's very personalized and it's catered towards things like the length of the umbilical cord and the size of the placenta and the exact volume rather than just running it through a machine. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. A lot of great things. And that's 
A N J A Angelhealth.com. <laughs> so <laughs> check it out. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, it's great. Uh, I think we are very different than most of the other cord blanks out there. Cord blood banks out there, mm-hmm. um, where it seems a lot like uh, the landscape's filled with like commodity service, where we have pr- provide that personal touch that yeah. is very service driven and you know covers really the the full space of right. cord blood banking. Okay. Uh, so where where is the lab where we store all the cord blood, cord tissue, and placenta? Yes. Yeah, so it is in New Jersey, about an hour outside of New York City. Actually, a lot of labs are based in New Jersey. I've personally been many times. Um, It's an amazing place because we get so many umbilical cords and placentas. And it's just crazy to think that it's come from babies that were just birthed. So um, yeah, I think it's really awesome to see, um, yeah, to see just so many births and to be a part of that. So yes, it's in New Jersey. Awesome. New Jersey is pretty far, but how long can, and how far can cord blood be shipped? It can be, so cord blood can remain, um, a lot of folks like to use the phrase on ice, but it's not exactly on ice. It can remain at room temperature um, in our kit for up to 72 hours after birth. So we ask that parents call us within six hours of birth so that we have enough time to get a courier dispatched to where you are and to bring it to our lab in New Jersey. But we've literally done shipments and served parents in Hawaii and Alaska and still gotten it to our lab within 72 hours. So our courier, our couriers work very quickly to get it to our lab on time. So... Um, yeah, we'll definitely get it there. Amazing. Now, shifting gears back to stem cell research, how far along is research in this area? I would say it's definitely far along, and it only increases in velocity every year. Um, so when you're looking at cord blood, stem cells, especially if you search cord blood in pretty much any disease, you can generally find at least some early semblance of research in the area. So for instance, when one of my friends was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, then um, I searched ulcerative colitis, cord blood stem cells, and it was really incredible to find quite a few really promising studies on it. Um, and so, yeah, I think for cord blood, it's definitely far along. People have started to, within the last decade, especially utilize cord tissue and placenta stem cells in tandem with the cord blood stem cells to just make the treatment more potent. So Mm -hmm. um, I think that has also been able to contribute quite a bit to the development of all of the above. Um, And I think people are just increasingly looking at cord blood stem cells because um, the, the stem cells are so new and the baby's immune system hasn't shifted the cell in any way. So it's less likely to have an immuno response um, when it's being transplanted. So I think for that reason, cord blood stem cells are a really, really promising and optimistic part of regenerative medicine. Wow. Yeah. And in terms of actually freezing it, you talk through this whole process of couriers and getting into us in New Jersey and all that stuff. Could I just freeze it myself in my, my home freezer? <laughs> no, you, I would not recommend freezing cord blood stem cells yourself if you're pregnant because uh, you will need a tank with negative 190 degrees Celsius capabilities and vapor nitrogen in order to keep those cells alive. So it's mm-hmm. very similar to if you ask yourself, can I freeze my eggs and sperm at home? Like the answer would be no, you just wouldn't even know how to do that. So you definitely can't freeze your stem cells at home, unfortunately. Um, and if it's already in your fridge, the stem cells are unfortunately already passed away. So I mm. would just reminisce with the the token of your baby that you have. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Um, and let's say I was pregnant and I wanted to uh, make sure that all the cord blood kind of went back into my baby. Can I do some level of delayed cord blood uh, clamping? Or, you know, with with my baby, if I still want to bank some of the cord blood? Yes. So you can do delayed cord clamping if you're currently pregnant. And if you're creating your birth plan right now, I would definitely do delayed cord clamping as well. Um, the A lot of different established birth organizations and authorities, like Cleveland Clinic, for instance, um, and the American Academy of Pediatrics and ACOG, um, the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, um, all do discuss delayed cord clamping. However, um, there is not any evidence that states that doing delayed cord clamping for longer than 60 seconds provides any more benefits than doing it for 60 seconds. Hmm. So most OBs that I've chatted with recommend doing delayed cord clamping for actually just around 45 seconds wow. or anywhere from 45 to 60. And then um, with Angia Health, if you want to save your stem cells, Cells within your cord blood as well, you can do up to two minutes of delayed cord clamping. So funny. <laughs> yes. And then 
save the rest. And um, we work with OBs too. And we mentioned this in our instructions in our kid and things like that, that if you do delayed cord clamping, we recommend milking the cord after birth and just really making sure that you can get as much cord blood as possible into the bag. So there are definitely ways where you can do both. Amazing. And so let's say I'm ready to you know, have a kid and I come down with something, you know, would I be able to use those stem cells to treat whatever my ailment might be? Um, or maybe uh, I have a, you know, firstborn who came down with something and, you know, we're about to have our second child and we're planning for that. Um, could they use the stem cells in this? Yeah. So parents are a 50% match for their baby's cord blood stem cells and siblings are a 75% match. Mm -hmm. And then other family members could be potential partial matches as well. So that's for cord blood stem cells. For cord tissue and placenta stem cells, they actually don't require a match, um, but can be used in addition to the cord blood stem cells. So that's why I think our most popular option is to bank cord blood, cord tissue, and placenta stem cells. Um, but yes, family members can do that. Okay, so just pop out as many kids as I can. <laughs> <laughs> Keep on banking. That's great. Uh, that's really, really good for the whole family, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and so now just like going back to logistics, I'm due soon. You know, when should I call? When should I order? Like how much time do I really need in order to make sure that I can properly bank my stem cells? Yeah. So I would, if you're currently pregnant, I would definitely recommend ordering an Anja Health kit as soon as possible. If you plan on even being interested in cord blood banking, mm -hmm. um, because if you want to save your baby's stem cells, you need that kit with you right at birth. So that is something that's really important. And I, I've spoken with quite a few parents who have, who intended on saving their baby's stem cells at birth, but then forgot to order a kit or birth came unexpectedly early. Um, so you never know what's going to happen very over 90% of births happen outside of the due date that mm. um, was given. So it's an EDD estimated due date. Yeah. Um, and for that reason, I always suggest that parents just get the kit with us as soon as they make the decision that they want to, because you never know when birth could come. And we will take care of sending the kit to you when you would need it. Um, so we send it to you at around 30 weeks. Um, if you order prior to that, and then if you order after that, we'll send it right away within around three days. And if you're giving birth really soon, then we can send emergency kits too. We have kids stations throughout the United States that we can dispatch pretty immediately. We've had parents get kits with us when they're four centimeters dilated and we've been able to get them in time. So, um, yeah, I would just do it as soon as you make the decision to. Makes sense. Um, yeah, that's insane. Uh, baby popping out and <laughs> yeah. uh, able to able to make it happen. That's that's really cool. Um, so uh, when uh, let's see, so yeah, what happens after enrollment? So like you know who who tells the doctor that um, I'm banking? Is that something we do? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Yeah. So after you get, um, if you're pregnant and then you get. It, or wait, if you're pregnant and if you get one of our Anja Health kits and you plan on saving stem cells right at birth, then we would recommend mentioning it to your doctor for sure, um, to your provider in general, anyone that's involved in birth, whether it be a doula or a midwife or OBGYN, we recommend telling them that you plan on doing this, that you got the kit. Um, they will they will tell you to get the kit if you haven't yet. Um, and we also recommend reminding your provider at birth as well that you have the kit because especially in a hospital setting, for instance, there are a lot of nurses, there can be shift changes and things like that. So you want to make sure that every party is aware that you intend on doing this. Um, and I would just go over your birth plan in general with them and include cord blood banking in that. So I would look your provider in the eye and remind them that, that you definitely um, have this kit and plan on doing it. So yeah, you should mention it to your provider as a parent, but we also fax reminders to your provider. Um, and we do our best to work with your provider. So for instance, if you're doing a home birth and are working with a midwife, then we don't mind getting on the phone with them and walking them through how cord blood banking works. But generally providers have seen it before. Cool. Um, 
And how do we track each person's stem cells? I know we talk a lot about tanks, right? And mm -hmm. when I first heard that, I was thinking like, is this like a vat of stem cells just all <laughs> swirling around? But yeah, how do we track it? Make sure that everyone kind of has their stem cells separated and when they need them, they can get them. Yes, everyone's stem cells are actually in what looks like a cassette. Um, hmm. And then they're placed in a larger uh, tank it, filled with vapor nitrogen. Um, and there are racks inside of this tank. Um, and they're all very clearly labeled. Our lab has had over 40 years of experience dealing with biological products um, and they are all aligned with the FDA as well as um, AABB accreditation. In fact, our lab director used to work with the AABB, so he runs a very tight ship at our lab and we make sure that everything is really clearly labeled and aligned. We would be violating federal regulations if we didn't do that. So we make sure that everything is specified. Um, and yeah, we work with various um, regulatory bodies around labeling and things like that. So we definitely make sure that your stem cells are yours and that you can later on use and see them if you would like. Amazing. And one last question here. I was curious, there's a lot of um, you know, midwives who work with, who do home births and everything else. Can I bank cord blood if I have a home birth? Yes, you can. Um, if you're doing a home birth, you can bank cord blood stem cells. Um, basically, you would just need a, whoever is doing your birth and overseeing it. Um, I would just recommend that they look over our instructions and our kit ahead of time. Um, and make sure that they understand what's happening. Um, we can also have a call with them, but we've definitely been a part of home births and we've never actually had someone request additional help. But generally midwives are overseeing home births and um, have done cord blood banking and the instructions are pretty simple. It's relatively foolproof. Amazing. Cool. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to the Angel Health podcast. If you have any other FAQs, you can head to angelhealth.com slash FAQ um, or reach us on any social media platform pretty much. We also have a real person uh, in the lower right-hand corner of our site where you can ask direct questions um, and we can answer you directly.